Oh, that? yeah. Look at that. That's a breeze. Yeah. Yeah, we're basically taking a nice, cool, running, driving car and making it a rattle trap. Yeah, a fast one, though. Towards me now? Yeah. I like the 265 and the three speed. Now you tell me. <laughs> I know. No, I do too. We're it, really gonna change the character of this car a lot. It was just like a sweet cruiser before, and now it's gonna be all violent and hot rod style. Yeah, I have to admit that when we were at the street drags, it almost felt like a little inadequate. And you really don't want to go to the street drags in Kingman, Arizona with inadequacy issues. You want to be bold and competent with a 505 horsepower engine, right? This is the so-called COVID-350. I assembled this with mostly used parts I had sitting around my garage. So here's what it is. Basic 350 Chevy, 30,000 silver bore, so it's 355 cubic inches. It does have forged pistons for 11 and a quarter to one compression ratio. One of the secrets to power is the Blueprint Engine's 210cc CNC ported cylinder heads. It has a solid roller cam. Comp cam's 242, 248 at 50. And with the rocker arms that I've got on here, it does have 600 lift. But we ended up testing it on the dyno for episodes that you'll see of Engine Masters using an Edelbrock Super Victor intake and a 750 Holley. And it made 446 pound-feet of torque at 5,200 RPM and 502 horsepower at 6,600 RPM. So it's gonna be pretty cool for this thing, especially with the stick. Seven grand. Right now we're waiting for parts, so there's no actual work happening on the 56 Chevy, but there's this big ugly dent in the quarter panel that's been bothering me for a long time, so I decided to try to do something about it. I've got this suction cup dent puller that I've never actually used. This is gonna be the secret to pulling this dent out. Hmm, that didn't do much. This is kind of textured, so I don't know if I'm getting a perfect feel. Oh, that is no suction. What this is gonna come down to is basically the force of the suction cup. It's gotta be great enough to pull the dent. So I wet it down with a little bit of glass cleaner to provide a seal. And as you can hear, I have the air compressor running for more air pressure. If we were working on a late model car, that would come out right now, but the metal on this car is really thick. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it with this. So I'm gonna move on to plan B. For my next attempt here, I'm gonna use a principle uh, that I learned from the ancient Greek philosopher and mathematician, Archimedes, and that's the principle of leverage. I've got a two by four tucked up in the quarter panel, and I've got this jack handle, and, um, I should be able to exert a tremendous amount of force on this quarter panel and thereby pop that dent right out. It's definitely moving it. I have, I have to give Archimedes some credit there, but it seems like it just wants to flex. I reposition my wood. I think it's getting better. I don't want to hurt myself here. Ugh. Whoa, I think something's actually happened. Whoa, oh, there goes the GoPro. I don't care, I'm getting the dent out. But actually, it's a lot better. Um, wow, that was an annoying dent, and now it's virtually camouflaged. You I, can't even tell. I could hardly live with it, honestly. It was pretty terrible. Okay. I think it's good. In and, okay, it's now ramrodded into the floor. That is a problem, isn't it? Yeah, tell me if that gets better or worse. Uh, worse, 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 okay. better, and worse, worse. We're at the point where the shifter is blocking our progress with getting the engine in place. So I'm just gonna cut a hole in the floor. You can see that there's already a couple holes here for at least a couple transmissions over the years. Yep, all fixed. no going back. This is gonna feel like victory. I don't have a lower radiator hose yet, but it's gonna make me feel like the radiator's installed when I put on the upper. Oh, but I can't do it. See, we moved this whole engine three quarters of an inch forward, and it affected a bunch of stuff, like fan to radiator clearance. You can see that it's gonna have to shorten up this radiator hose quite a bit. 
Nailed it, first try. Didn't even cut it too short. It's the mark of a professional. The front clip's on, which means we have water in the radiator. It's all hooked up. Now I can finally time this thing. Go. Ready? I'll let you know when it stops advancing. Does it seem to run really bad? Yeah. Why? I don't know what's the advance showing. This is super frustrating. I finally got the thing so that I could time it, I could see the mark and everything, and the timing mark is just jumping everywhere, which is consistent with the fact that the engine runs ratty and terrible. We went all through and checked all the connections and wires and firing order and all this stuff, and uh, ultimately we're gonna blame the distributor, which doesn't surprise me a lot because we took this distributor out of that engine over there that came out of my Model A that always ran like trash, and maybe that's why. I had this MSD distributor sitting around. It's a locked out one, no advance curve in it, but it needs a box. And I didn't have one, so we started rifling around for that. And Steve found an MSD 6A on his dyno. And so he's gonna go scavenge that. I'm gonna install this in the engine and hopefully we can solve the problem by replacing every part that we could possibly find. So this was locked out. I modified it with an ignition curve, and now I've got the engine at top dead center on number one, ready to drop this thing in. I will end up wiring that MSD quick and dirty roadkill style butchery just so we can get this thing going because we're way behind schedule right now. How's that for an installation? Roadkill style. First things first, we're gonna weigh this pooch and see how much garbage we can remove. Ready? Oh yeah. Man, 2960, not bad. No, it's really good. We're gonna get this thing well below 2900 because I forgot another thing that I wanna do. What? Disc brakes on the front and back. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a lot. That'll be a lot. It's gonna be really good. Race car! Yeah, it is. Let's tear the headliner out. Let's leave it on the scales to see how much the headliner and all of the mouse poop weighs. Oh, it's gonna be a miserable job. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so bad. Yeah. I don't know why I blew out the interior. Oh! <laughs> Look at the debris. Ah! How much poo is there? This is literally disgusting and filthy. Oh. Not as bad in the back. What are the odds of this car ever having a headliner? Zero. This headliner is from when guys in Southern California would literally go down to Tijuana to get their upholstery done because it was so much cheaper and in many cases better. Yeah. Look here at all of the peanut shells that were in the headliner. A mouse would do that. Yuck. How much filth did we remove? So the headliner, incredible amounts of mouse poop, a lot of insulation, and all the headliner hardware, 13 pounds. Wow. It now is 2947. Well, getting a lot better. It is. What's next? I would like to go front to back and remove every little bracket and doohickey that we just don't need. Taking out the dome light that's been in there since 1956. Zero chance I'll ever make that work. No. Dude. Oh. 2907. Dude. We took 53 pounds off the car. That's like a sack of cement. And right? 40 pounds of just garbage that we didn't even care about. Pretty good. And we still have a lot more to go. Yeah, we're still gonna lose more weight with fiberglass hood, brakes, stuff. It's gonna be great. Uh -huh. Wow. Awesome. I stacked on the scale every single thing that I removed from the brakes on one side of the car, and it's 30 and 3 quarters pounds. The question mark is, how much lighter are the new disc brakes that I'm about to install? Ready? And that says, whoa, 19 pounds. About a 12 pound difference on one side of the car. That's 24 pounds overall off the nose of the car, which means as soon as I install this stuff, we are finally, officially, below 2,900 pounds on the car. Cool. Now I have to get back to work, though. Got to pull the shocks and coil springs.
Got it. It popped. Oh, good. <laughs> yep. That's a pretty long spring. That's a pretty long spring. And look how thick it is. Holy cow, no wonder this thing rode like a truck. There we go. Got it. I'm really good at disassembling stuff. We got the front suspension apart. I can't put it back together because I left my ball joint spacers at home. So we're gonna continue disassembling by taking the hood off. We got a fiberglass one, so we're gonna pull this off and weigh it. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, more so than kidding. I thought. I wonder how heavy it is. Oh, conveniently, there's a scale here, but we may exceed the limits of it. It went all the way around. It's 44. Okay, I'll buy that. Okay, now let's open our fiberglass one. Where do you want to put this? In the back of my truck? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, grab that. Wow. What have we got? 12 and a half. And so the other one was? 44. So that's 32, 32 pounds. pounds savings. Yeah. Between that and the brakes, that's 50 pounds. Let's see if it even fits, though, before I start gloating. Okay. So this is an unlimited products race weight hood, full pin-on, as light as it gets, as flimsy as it gets, no structure. Actually, it's not that bad, as far as I can tell so far. Oh, yeah. That's mint. mint. This is mint. I'm gonna make you paint this red oxide. How good of a call is that? I like it. Wow. Yeah. 32 pounds. This Look thing's gonna nice be that light. Is. Cool. Race car. Race car. There, we added lightness and safety. Everyone clear? And the verdict is? Look how soft it is, dude! Whoa! Wow! I wonder if we could actually get it off the ground by bouncing it. I think we can. Let's try. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> that's nuts. Wow. OK, that's going to be interesting to drive. We did the bounce test and learned two big failure points. One, our brake hoses are way too long. Second of all, the tires hit the headers on full compression. And I'm going to have to figure out how to make a bump stop to stop that, because I don't want to come up from a wheelie, come down, lock up the tires on the headers, and go directly into the wall. Remember the last time we were at the track with this car? Oh yeah, grenade at the original rear end. So what have we fixed since then? I guess people have seen it on this episode, but to encapsulate it. Well, we lightened the car up, we put the fiberglass hood, we put the new rear end, the nine inch Ford. Changed it to 488s. Yeah, it's got good axle shafts. Yep. New brakes in the back. Slapper Sams instead of those underbars. The slapper Sams should be good. Ported intake manifold, coil overs. Yeah. Do you want me to go straight to five grand launch or are you gonna let me like, make a 3500 launch and make a safety pass to get a number first. 5,000 RPM is the starting point for Iberger. <laughs> get behind the wheel and let's uh, see what she does. I don't want to break the trans. No, it'll be fine. I think the driver's going to win this one. All right, uh -huh. let's race. <laughs> We listed a lot of the stuff we changed on the car. One thing I didn't mention is that it's got bigger rear tires now. There's a Mickey Thompson ET Street R. I've never run on them before. They're actually DOT legal. It's a 28 1150 15 on a 15 by 8. I'm putting these at 12 pounds, thinking that they'll heat to 13 in the burnout. And we're ready to go. Last time we were here, we busted into the 11s. I'm hoping with these improvements, the car is gonna be quicker, but I know that nine inch Ford we've got in the back is filled. That is definitely not failing. You never know what's gonna happen until you get her down track. So here we go. Okay, hopefully he's happy with that. Now, I'm really curious to see what those slapper bars will do. I'm really hoping that they transfer a lot of weight and the thing just, boom, takes off like a freaking rocket. So keep an eye on that, the chassis reaction.
okay, we'll be able to improve that. Oil pressure and temperature seems all good. All right, 1182 at 118. I believe that may be the quickest the car's run, but it had a definite bog off the line. It wasn't quite the right launch technique. All right, so it basically wants like 4,200 on the launch, I think. I think he's going to have to uh, work that clutch a little bit. Shifting at 7,000 is cool. I'm still granny shifting the thing. want to ease up on it. If we can get Freiburger on board, we may get our best time yet. It's hard to figure out that launch, isn't it? It is. And that was about 3,800, and it launched and then bogged. So I think 442 is the number. So what'd it do? Uh, 1.8260, so mm. 1182 at 118. Mile an hour I like. That should be running low 11s. It's all on the launch, man. Yeah, for all sure. All on launch, so. It's hard to figure out, but yeah. you're right. It's not going to take a clutch dump. It's going to take a room. Yeah, you're going to have to do some fancy footwork for iBurger and really make it happen. Yep. Obviously better, 169.60. We're looking at 11.600 in the quarter mile. That's the ET at 118.03. So it was all on the line. He drove it better. It was not perfection, but an improvement and that's a step in the right direction. 